long time ago. How heavy was sack of rice? 500 pounds? 100 pounds? 100 pounds. 100 pounds. I carried a 100 pounds sack every day before I put this costume to dance. Or else you can't manage. It's that heavy. That's kabuki. That's why it's for men. A lady can, a woman cannot do it. It's very heavy. My father's friends, they tell my father, oh, I have a son, baby boy. I was a girl. And so I thought the kabuki, I could be a boy to be a man. That's why I started. One day my father took me to see, a, it was a New Year's Day, oh. to see a, a, a shoujo kabuki. They had a kabuki here. Oh. And oh, I thought that was so, they were so good. I think she was very, very blessed to have parents who wanted to give their daughter what she dreamt of. And she had a mother, my grandmother, who found the best. <laughs> the best in Japan for her. She was able to meet the god of dance. His name was Kikugoro, Onoe Kikugoro. I have to start from bowing. Every day they won't teach me anything. I remember she said she would take the bus to her classes and she would always be going through the steps of this character and that character. She would be going through the dialogue in her head and then she also had to go to shamisen practice. So it was a pretty grueling period of training. You call in Japan gama. I thought to myself, it's going to take me 100 years, 100 years and I'm not going to make it. I said, oh God, I can't go back to America. Rokudaime Kikugoro, what he was renowned for was his Kagami Jishi, which is the mirror lion dance. And he told my mother, I want you to take this dance back to America. And that's kind of unheard of, because this is his dance. He gave me the costume, the wig, he taught me this dance, and this is my first debut here. If I didn't make it, well, if I didn't go to Japan, I would regret it for the rest of my life, I think. I would say the highlight of my life would be watching her dance. She was, she was beyond beautiful. She just transported you to a different world. I studied with her until the war came. That was very, very sad day, wasn't it? My father was lying down on the sofa. He was resting. And then, bang, bang, you know, the door. When I was in the camp, many students, my students that I was teaching, want to come into my camp to study more. We couldn't dance Japanese dance at first, but later on, they uh, relaxed that. I'd say she was like a rock star in that era of camp days, going from camp to camp. It was a sellout wherever she went. She is truly one of our you know, cultural treasures. When you decide that you want to be part of Fujima Kansuma Kai, you are committing to a standard. Her daughter now is sort of her legs. You know, she's the dancer. When they teach, though, she sits in a chair and the music starts and she kind of taps her foot and she hits her fan. She dances in a chair. She's always brought the best of the culture and shared it with the community. Little Tokyo is like her home away from home. Even at 100, when she teaches from the chair, she, she looks better than all of us. And, it, and it's like, wow. We just kind of all look at her and we go, wow. How does she do that? <laughs> she still studies. She studies, how can I improve this? Oh, how can I make this better? I feel very privileged to have been her student all these years. Her goal was to make each one of us realize the importance of practice and to become better. 
not only a better dancer, but a better person. She uh, gauged us on how to live our life. It's like, there's always room for improvement.